First of all, a <clears throat> brief statement, and then uh, I'd like to ask you about uh, some of these questions, including give you an opportunity perhaps to elaborate on the question that uh, Senator Hawley was asking. Uh, but first of all, Mr. Chairman, uh, let me express the frustration I have about this whole issue. We conflate everything into one thing and never start talking specifically about the elements that we have to address. We've got a drug problem with fentanyl. That's separate from immigration, but some of it comes in on the border. And that's a serious conversation, in my view, that deserves its own focus. Second, we have a labor problem. We need more H1, H2A and H2B visas. And I believe that could be dealt with and addressed separately to try to meet the needs that many of our employers have and also uh, to uh, get some more control and management on the border. Third, We've got these young people who are not so young now, many of whom have served in the military, but they were brought over by their parents when they were seven or eight or nine years old. We have one who's a graduate of UVM Medical School, and he has an uncertain status. And the only country he's ever really known is the United States, and he's a big contributor. We should be dealing with the dreamers separately. And then fourth, we've got an incredible challenge at the southern border and an emerging challenge at the northern border. So whether you want to use the term crisis or not, it is a very serious problem. When two million people show up at your door, that's a problem because we don't have the capacity to accommodate that. And probably our toughest issue. Now, some of these issues are because Congress has failed to act. I think Senator Lee made some really good points about parole, but that's within our jurisdiction to define what that is. And if we do nothing, how can we blame an administration for trying to do something that makes sense uh, to try to get some control over the border? So this is on Congress. And uh, you know, Senator Cruz, I, 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 maybe I would use the term uh, 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 crisis at the border uh, because two million people showing up, you know, that's a really serious problem. Uh, but it's not as though they, that it, any individual who has Mr. Mayorkas's job, whether in the Trump administration or the Biden administration, can control a lot of what happens. And the thing that we're not acknowledging here is that if you have two million people showing up because of various factors that makes them so desperate that they'll even come with their children. A war in Ukraine, a rogue rebel group showing up in Syria alone, chopping off hands of 16-year-old kids who then apply for refugee status, or failed states in Cuba, in Venezuela, in Nicaragua, and people being so desperate, they're willing to risk walking through the Darien Gap. I mean, Secretary Mayorkas can't handle that and I mean, it, it, you can't stop those factors. You have nothing to do with them. You've got to deal with the consequences of them. And my view is that each one of these elements that I've described has an urgency of its own and requires focused attention, including some of these legal questions that Senator Cruz, you've raised and Senator Lee has raised. That's just by way of background to express my own frustration about what I see as a failure of Congress to do its part. Now, Secretary Mayorkas, I want to give you a chance to address the questions that uh, Senator Hawley was raising and just take a minute to do that. So, uh, thank you, Senator. So let me, let me explain uh, the program that we uh, announced and have been implementing since January 5th because it's been tremendously successful. We were encountering... But quickly. We were encountering a significant number of individuals from Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, and Venezuela. And with respect to Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela specifically, it's extremely difficult to remove individuals from those countries because of um, the status of our lack of diplomatic relations. We were seeing in, in one month up to 90,000 encounters of those individuals from those four countries in between our ports of entry in one month. And what we did, because we do see tremendous tragedy at the hands of the smuggling organizations, 
is develop a safe, lawful, and orderly way for them to come to the United States instead of placing their lives and their life savings in the hands of the smugglers. Right, thank we you. have seen a 95% drop in the number of individuals from those countries encountered at our southern border in between the ports of entry because people will take a lawful, safe, and orderly path and not okay. take an irregular path thank into you. hands of smugglers. Thank you. I want to go to fentanyl. Uh, Senator Corn Cornyn led a CODEL uh, to Mexico, and it was tremendous and constructive, and I want to thank him for that. Senator Lee was on that. There was an interaction with the president of Mexico, led by Chris Murphy and also uh, by, by Jerry Moran, senators, who confronted the president about the precursor drugs that are coming into Mexico from China and then used in the manufacturing of fentanyl that comes up to the United States. And they asked and received what I heard was a very strong commitment on the part of the president of Mexico uh, to address China. We don't really have that opportunity, but to address China about stopping those precursors. That's a level of cooperation that we need more of. Would you agree? Uh, yes, yes, indeed. And we've spoken uh, as well uh, with our Mexican counterparts about the need to interdict the precursor chemicals, as well as the manufacturing equipment. All right, and President uh, Obrador had a real objection to all the guns that are coming from the U.S. into Mexico and then ending up in the hands of cartels that just commit unspeakable violence with them. Are we doing all we can to cooperate with the president to keep our guns from going south? Yes, we are, Senator. Now, you have authorities under Section 702 of FISA, is that helpful at all to you with respect to addressing the fentanyl crisis? It is extraordinarily helpful. We have, uh, over the years, uh, stopped a terrorism, uh, a terrorists from arriving in the United States using our 702 authority, uh, our intelligence uh, collection capabilities with respect to foreign nationals. What are the concrete steps we can take to try to alleviate the pressure on the southern border that you would recommend that we pay more attention to? I would say there, there are uh, multiple. Uh, number one, first and foremost, we have to fix our broken immigration system. Everyone agrees it is broken. Uh, number two, uh, we need to build safe, lawful, and orderly pathways so people do not place their lives in the hands of smugglers. We have to cut the smuggling organizations out and we have to uh, reduce irregular migration and build lawful pathways. Okay. And three, we have to address the root causes, what you spoke of at the very outset. Why do people leave their homes, their countries of origin, uh, to travel through multiple countries to ultimately reach the United States <clears throat> or elsewhere? Because we're seeing enormous migration throughout the entire in My hemisphere. final minute, let me ask you about the northern border. This is Vermont and New York as well. We're seeing a surge between uh, October 1 and December 31, 2022. CPP uh, apprehended 1,146 uh, migrants crossing into the U.S. through the Swanton sec sector. That's up in uh, northwest Vermont. During that same period in 2021, it was only 136 migrants. Uh, more are crossing from the United States into Canada at the northern border. What are we doing about the situation of migrants from the U.S. traveling to Canada and Canada to the U.S.? So we're very focused on that, uh, Senator, as I mentioned uh, earlier in my testimony. And what we did, uh, what we announced just last week is a perfect example uh, of our focus. We um, uh, finished we promulgated the Safe Third Country Agreement with Canada uh, to uh, bring greater enforcement authority to both our countries with respect to um, encounters in between the ports of entry. Okay, uh, thank you. And just before I yield back, I would just say uh, to all of my colleagues, you know, we can have whoever happens to be the Secretary of Homeland Security and bring them in and beat them up or we can do our job. And my hope is we could do our job. I yield back. Madam Chair. I call on like Senator 